Now I'd like to welcome Leon Fair. Leon's also from Omni TI, and he has 20 years of experience architecting large-scale distributed computing systems. And he's going to talk about developers being on call, one of our favorite topics, right? Please welcome Leon. Thank you, thank you. So how many of you, of those who identify yourself as developers, are actually on call? Oh, there's so many of you who are going to hate me. Um, so I'm a developer. I've been a developer for many years, uh, since mid-90s. And uh, I started my career in federal government con uh, contracting. Anybody ever done this know how siloed and rigid that place is? So as a developer, we just sat in the corner, wrote our code, and sometimes literally threw it over the wall of the cubicle to ops to manage it. We had no access to production. We weren't allowed to touch production, whether it was a database, whether it was a server. Uh, we had no access to any metrics. We had nothing. We just sat in our little corner alone, only writing the code. But as the time went on, and arguably as I moved away from the government, uh, that mentality have changed a little bit, right? So as the developers, we got a little more access. Um, we got allowed to look at the logs. We got pseudo access in some of the production servers. We got access to production database. We got access to the metrics. So, but the more, the more and more responsibilities we got, uh, the more often the question came up, should the developers be on call, right? Should the developers be responsible for applications, right, and manage it, right? And I talked to a lot of people, and a lot of people employ a lot of different strategies, right? Some have developers running a primary on on-call, some have developers in a rotation, uh, some have no developers on call, right, because there are a bunch of you who said they're developers and never been on call. And the right answer is yes, with a question mark, but the, the really true answer is maybe. I mean, it really depends on your problems, right? If the most of the problem is that you're gonna woke up in the middle of the night and network problems, then there is absolutely no use to have a developer on call. Now, if your application breaks every night, then congratulations, you're on call. I mean, at the end of the day, the goal is, and I think a couple of people said it over the past few days, is to wake up as few possible people as possible in the middle of the night. Because people are really not happy when they're woken up in the middle of the night. And I actually was going to talk about actionable alerts, but since Aaron stole my slides and talked about it for like 15 minutes, half an hour ago, I'm just going to stand here in awkward silence. <laughs> no, I mean, really. <laughs> but one thing I do want to talk about, that in addition to those great questions, you've got to ask yourself a fourth question. Can somebody else fix it in the middle of the night when something breaks, right? Because if the answer is no, then congratulations, you're permanently on call. So all that may hopefully makes sense, right? After, especially after Aaron Soch, who gave a much more detailed explanation of how alerts work and how everything should work, right? So what can we, and by we I mean as a developers, do to help those people who sit there on call, regardless of what their role is, right? And the first answer is, again, talked about by Aaron, is documentation. And I know everybody hates documentation. Nobody likes to write documentation. Even if you do, you're probably lying to yourself or to others. Uh, but documentation is important, right? Nobody wants to wake up in the middle of the night, uh, get on the page, look at the problem, and have absolutely no way to know what the problem is or how to troubleshoot it, right? I'm a huge fan of anybody should be able to put an alert, but every alert should have a full troubleshooting instructions as well as escalation point, right? The second thing that I truly believe in, you should really alert only on things that are important. And more likely than not, what's important is business, right? Nobody cares if the latency on your API is slight or higher, right? Especially in the middle of the night. People sure as hell will care if that latency affects revenue. That is not to say that you should not monitor everything, right? You should collect as much data as possible. Just don't alert on everything. Some, some information is just in, useless in the middle of the night, right? You shouldn't care about it. And another thing to remember, that monitoring is not a feature. You cannot spend three months building your application, launching it, and then saying, hey, I should probably put some monitors on it. You should continuously integrate the monitoring as part of your process. As you build out the feature, you should instrument your metrics as well. It is a continuous process, right? It's the same thing as unit tests. You don't build your tests at the end of the project, right? You build the functionality, you build your unit tests, you instrument it. Something breaks in production, you fix it, you add another test, you add another metric to monitor for it. And, and another thing which 
arguably is the most important, is availability, right? If you push something on a Friday afternoon, don't go drink on Friday night. I mean, if there is a huge market in Asia or Saturday, don't go somewhere in the neck of the woods and disconnect like Leon was talking about. That's probably not the best day to take off, right? I mean, at the end of the day, all of this is common sense. So regardless of what your role is, just be a good citizen, right? I mean, be kind to the people, empathetic to people who actually have to wake up in the middle of the night because someday it actually may be you. And that's it for me. Thank you. <laughs>